Canada's worst handymen are starting to blame us for their bad work. They're saying we don't give them enough time. You gonna measure that first to make sure it's 60 degrees? I don't have time. Oh, they say you don't give us proper directions. I'm pissed off at the lack of instructions here with what this primer is supposed to do. Uh, Did you read the instructions on the container? No, I didn't. They even say we're too harsh. Did you want the corners done too? No, we thought we'd let all of the heat rush out through there. Okay, you gotta go. Yeah. None of that is true. We give them all the time in the world. Last piece. <laughs> done. Done. We give them complete directions. White on white, black on black. No sparky sparky. And the truth is harsh, not us. Well, I that is absolute Oh, that's nice. And here's the harshest truth of all. We told them, don't build your eco sheds taller than nine foot two, but only one of them followed that advice. When they try to wheel these monstrosities out through those doors, well, they're in for a world of trouble. They're not going to fit. This really is Canada's worst handyman. Stop! Let her go, let her go! The nominees for Canada's worst handyman were brought to us by you. Terry was made a candidate by his pal, Harvey. Canada's worst handyman is Terry Kress. In his mind, he thinks he's the best. Want to hold your hand? No, I don't want you to hold my hand. But two shows ago, ah. Harvey went down with a bad back. So, Terry's wife Angie stepped in to fill his shoes. Ta-da! Now, Terry's on his best behavior. Hey, can I have a kiss? Oh, hon. Thank you. Last episode, the group wasn't happy when Terry was named the most improved handyman. Ha ha ha! Whatever! That honor makes him the foreman. Later today in the group challenge. Well, they got a plan for me today. I don't know what the plan is, but they got a plan for me. To kick things off, Terry's crew gives him a sign of their respect. Hey! Hey, how's it been going for you? You're gonna have a sore arse when this is over. Everybody wants to kick the foreman. Oh, I know. <laughs> Ruth was nominated for the title of Canada's Worst Handyman by her daughter, Michelle. What we should do is we should have a strategy. At home in Saskatchewan, Ruth's strategy is to work first and ask questions later. You got the wrong bit in that screw thing. Oh, jeez. Never mind. Oh. oh, that's another bit off. Here at the rehab center, though, she asks a lot of questions. I'm going to have to ask because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. How can I have four wires here? Where's my drill bit? Oh, it goes on like that, does it? Well, how do you measure the top angle then? What's the point? But Ruth doesn't pay attention to the answers. Is that how you're supposed to build it? Well, that's how I'm going to build it. If you imagine seeing a pro drywaller work, do you imagine him using his finger a lot? No. Do you think you made the hole too big? Whatever. In our second episode, Canada's worst handymen wired their eco sheds for solar electricity. Since the wiring happened, though, the sheds have been transformed from frames to full structures. During that construction, Terry correctly remembered to lead the wires for his solar panel out through the top plate of his wall. I screwed up. But Ruth accidentally buried her outgoing wires inside her wall. And in Candace's shed, the wires that should lead outdoors lead in. Candace was made a candidate for Canada's worst handyman by her husband, Justin. Punch me right in the chest. It's a pleasure. At home in Calgary, while Justin works his construction job, Candace watches home renovation shows. I like watching Homes on Homes, Trading Spaces, Ty Pennington on Extreme Makeover, Designer Guys. Hey, girl. In your head, you're an expert, aren't you? I am. In theory, Candace knows exactly what to do. But I don't know where to start. This is always my problem. She's not so hot when it comes to executing her theories. I like the thinking part about it. But the actual doing part, that's where I have my problems. Does she ever? Candace can't use power tools. Sometimes if you do it like at a different angle, it has to go in. She can't use hand tools. Let the saw do the work. And last episode. We found out she can't get on a ladder again because... I'm three months pregnant. So what? Yes. You're pregnant? Yeah. Hold on, I've almost got okay. these wires through. So, it's up to Justin to retrieve her misplaced solar wire. Ha ha!
Done. The solar energy that will flow through this wire will power these two batteries. These two batteries will ultimately power this stereo. So the next challenge for Canada's worst handyman is to take these pine boards and turn it into a protective battery box slash entertainment unit. Should be entertaining. That's what I'm going for. I don't know if it's going to turn out, though. Jaime from Regina was brought to our rehabilitation center by his constantly cackling mother-in-law, Sheila. <laughs> Since getting to rehab, Sheila has howled at every mistake poor Jaime's made. He always thinks I'm laughing at his work, and I'm really not. I'm laughing because it's really funny. If you stay here, you can't laugh, you can't boast, you gotta leave. <laughs> That is an annoying laugh. <laughs> As a handyman, Jaime gets better every day. Now I know how to do it. And every day, Sheila showers him with negativity. I don't know if I do what you just did. I don't know what you're doing. Go faster, Jaime. Better look again. Isn't this a discussion we have at home most of the time, how you lose things? In a weird way, that's how she shows uh, affection. Sheila must really love Jaime. Can't find this, can't find that, don't know where to start. Too late of the day, I work too hard. What? He doesn't work very hard at all. He should know what manual labor is, and then he'd know what work is. The final nominee for Canada's worst handyman is Jeff. He was put forward for the cutting title. Don't force the blade. By his friend, Fred. What? You're forcing the blade. Before Jeff came to rehab, he had no idea how to build or renovate anything. This is the cupboard that my son uh, ripped off uh, its hinges about five years ago. And, uh, we have the door, uh, we have the hinges, um, just don't know quite how to put the hinges on the door. So, technically speaking, all of this atrocious and highly unsafe work is really a vast improvement. Well, what am I doing wrong? Careful. Even with his improvements, Jeff was named the worst handyman here in two of our first five episodes. I know, I have some issues. After ten days in rehab, Jeff still hasn't befriended the tape measure. What do you got? Five. Yeah. Four, and, four and change. Four. Four-ish. And he still doesn't draw diagrams. For this challenge, the builder should create an upright shelf system that fits around the electrical panel. Use the brackets to support the shelves, and use the sides to support the top. The whole point of this challenge is to create something that will keep dust off of the all-important batteries. What's the rule of thumb? Always cover your batteries in dust? I was going to take them out, but I wasn't sure if uh, we're supposed to. To make sure everyone gets their wood cut exactly the way they want, we're opening up the chop shop. Most large building stores provide this service for a bucket cut. Can I just have one cut? I only have one more. Oh, yeah, well, go ahead, misery gut. I got Justin cutting my pieces right now. It's kind of not really going to be entertainment, so it's going to look more like kind of a bookshelf, I guess. You ever built a, a piece of furniture before? No. If it's up to Justin, she won't be making this one either. But I'm going to be doing some screwing, too. Oh. Hello. Stop it, it's mine. Justin, stop Hold doing on. my work. You're just taking my drill, and I need my drill back because I want to do my work. Justin, I'm the boss. Stop trying to take my thunder. Don't worry, hon. It's hard to take thunder when there is none. Oh, there's thunder. There's a storm brewing in Jaime's eco shed. As she does every day, Sheila is trying to provoke her son in law. An hour and a half, Jaime. You're going to get it done? An hour and a half? Today? Jaime's huh? not biting. Jaime, should I keep on so I get you excited? Come on! So, Sheila goes off to play with someone else. What the heck? You must have built cabinets before, eh? Uh-huh, so? Oh, I should just give you a swift kick for being so oh, smart. Oh, you son of a <laughs> Hey! Terry finally realizes why people are interested in his butt today. Oh! <laughs> You're my wife! You didn't even tell me! After the break, it's a rematch of the lightweights. Challenge rematch. Oh, shut up. Gee, <laughs> kick your butt. <laughs> oh! 
We're just two episodes away from naming the country's lousiest amateur builder. The five nominees for Canada's worst handyman are battling against their nominators. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Justin, please. I want to do my own shed. They're fighting against themselves. Come on. Go in, you mother. You. And they're clashing with each other. The guy that owns this shed should be Canada's worst handyman. Oh. Today, the carpenters in training are making a battery box slash shelving system. Listen, stop Hold doing on. my work. When this challenge began, I mentioned that later on today we're going to do tiling. So you got to clean your floors. Sheila mopped up immediately. Now she's skipping ahead, trying to stick Jaime's tiles to the wet plywood. Sheila, I don't yes. think we're supposed to start this yet. You have to let it dry. Jaime, it's not wet where I'm working. I'm going to just finish this, what I got in my pack. If you read the instructions for the gluing, you have to let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes before you start gluing it. Only if you're doing two coats, you have to wait in between. Oh, doesn't it jump out of my hands? These 39-cent corner braces are designed to bear a heavy load, provided the weight pushes down on them. If you use them flipped over, you're risking your shelf and everything on it. Ruth puts her support brackets on upside down, leaving all the weight of her shelf hanging by the threads of her screws. Now, Ruth wants to put on a brace. You do understand why you don't want that there, right? The beauty of this right now is that it fits against the wall. Yeah. You put that in there. Yeah. Here's your fit. Yeah, you're right. And you don't want that. Yeah, you're right. I am right. Ruth doesn't want that. She wants two like that. That board on the back is a bad idea. Yeah, it looks ugly. And it holds it out from the wall. That's Jill Rydell and Greg House, our two professional builders. Greg and Jill teach classes, observe the handyman, and at the end of every episode, decide who is the most improved and who is the worst. Candace, because she just isn't doing anything. Terry, I thought, would have picked up the pace a little better, and he didn't. Terry is flying through this task. Whoa! Like that. You're not attaching it to the wall, are you? Uh, no. At a glance, Terry's project looks fine, but his top is lower than his sides, and he's done nothing to protect his batteries. Terry finishes, but he didn't do what we asked him to. Where's the hinges? Uh, here is the door. At home in Mississauga, Jeff's kitchen is coming off its hinges. I have some uh, hinges. It's been like this for about uh, five years. We've provided hinges that are basic and free swinging. They're designed to be hidden inside the cupboard on the vertical edge of the door. What I'm thinking of doing. Jeff wants to put his hinges on the bottom of his door so it will flop open. You want it to flop that way? Yeah. I thought it would make it easier to pull stuff, put stuff in and out. Fred convinces Jeff to at least put the hinges on top, but Jeff doesn't bother to look at how they work. Don't drill it in. That rod's got to be resting on the edge of the shelf, okay? When Jeff's done, his hinge isn't allowing his door to shut properly, and the hinge is clearly visible. I, I didn't, I didn't, think, I didn't think we ever could hide the hinge. Jeff is behind on a few projects, like installing the electrical panel his shelves are supposed to surround. And that's going to give us plenty of room for the... Uh, the trophy. The panel. <laughs> the Canada's Worst Handyman trophy. Yeah. That I'm not going to win. I wouldn't be so sure. Jeff's battery box door doesn't shut. In Jaime's shed, his mother-in-law is still putting down tiles without letting the adhesive sit. Stop doing it! I said when I finish that pan. I do Jaime a favor and show Sheila the instructions. Adhesive must be dry before assembly, 30 to 40 minutes. Don't do anything if you're not gonna do what it's supposed to be. There's only 30 minutes left in this challenge, but now Terry's wife wants to start tiling too. Can I start laying the floor? You gotta lay the floor? Yeah, I thought we did. I thought well, we just had to wash it. Instead of letting Angie do what she wants, Terry takes over. Why won't you let me do it? Because, hon, every time I'm doing something else, you're... Well, go do that. That's I can't do that, hon. After five minutes, Angie's back in the driver's seat, rolling out wet cement and laying down dry tiles. Yeah. You have to apply it to both surfaces, let it dry completely, 
and then put it on. And when it's right. contact, it's there. And this is the kind of thing we would cover in our class about how to lay tiles if you just wait. Cork is an entirely recyclable product. But every year in Ontario alone, almost 100 million corks wind up in the dump. This waste is very disturbing. I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it! How much of this design is yours? It's all my design. Okay, if you undo hinges, I'm going to put the stereo up. Do you want them on the inside or the outside? Uh, it doesn't really matter. On the upside? Candace did manage to unpack the stereo herself. This challenge wasn't so bad. Ruth has her hinges put on the outside of her door so that when she opens it, she's prying the hinges off. Don't Good. force it. Well, you're SOL. Ruth has her stereo on the shelf. What's that? But the shelf isn't fastened to the wall. What's going on? You're not done it yet? No, he's not. Jaime's original idea. That's what I'm going for. I don't know if it's going to turn out, though. Proves to be too ambitious. When Ruth met Jeff 11 days ago, they rubbed each other the wrong way. There are there are there are no there there are no issues between me and any other cast member. Except maybe Ruth. When Ruth and Jeff clashed on day three, he's an ass. Yeah. Jeff tried to get rid of his rival by drawing her into a high stakes nail off. One nail, loser goes home. In the contest, Jeff got beat. Bye bye. But he didn't go home. I actually contend that I won that first uh, the first round. First round? Sounds like Jeff wants to go two out of three. Challenge rematch. Oh, shut up. Gee, <laughs> kick your butt. Sam's fighting words. For the rematch, the rules are simple. One combatant takes a swing, then the other. The winner is the handyman who drives home their nail with the fewest strokes. He let the loser go first, it's all right. <laughs> first shot by Jeff. That's one. <laughs> go, Ruth, go! <laughs> go inside of the house. <laughs> Headed for the finish, it's all Ruth, all the way. I think that's over. When we come back, Sheila stops being so pleasant. All I'm here for is to clean up after you. F off. These two screws are worth $1,000. I know they only cost pennies a piece to manufacture, but what's riding on them is a 26-inch flat-screen high-definition television set. Obviously, the next challenge for Canada's worst handyman is mounting this 15-kilogram television on the wall of their eco-shed. The first decision is where to put the TV. If I have to go take a leak, I can still kind of see what's going on in the TV. Makes sense to me. They recommend you attach it to a stud location. Our builders designed their own stud layouts just nine days ago. Now, none of them can remember where their studs are. I gotta find a stud. You could get a stud finder, but then it would just point to me. That's gotta go in the wall. They gotta go in here. And yes, it's gotta be done by hand. Ruth misses her stud. Ow! Yeah, Ruth has no concept of accuracy. It's not even close. Yeah. But that's okay, because these wall plugs will let a gypsum board bear a heavy load. This is gonna bloody well fall off the wall, this is. If they're fit snugly in place. They've got it in the thing. <sighs> mm. Look. There's a big hole in your wall. Drywall plugs are made the exact same size as drill bits, but... You made a hole in the gyprock with this drill, didn't you? Ruth's drill 
is holding a screwdriver bit. Well, I couldn't get it in otherwise. On her next attempt, Ruth uses a drill bit that's too small. And on her next attempt... Not too big. She tries to ream a bigger hole with the exact same drill bit. Me? Why are you blaming me for everything? Phillips screwdriver... Oh, man, I gotta clean this up. Or Sheila, maybe you can clean this up. I'm not doing anything you tell me to do. No one is telling Candace how to mount the rear bracket for her TV. So, she's going at the pace of a tortoise. Our resident hare already has his on. All right. But it's on sideways. That thing should be pointing down. How's it going for you, honey? Good. How's it going for you, Sheila? What's up? Is everything cool? Since getting to rehab, Sheila has attempted to dominate Jaime. And I said, if you don't listen to me, all war is going to break out. Sheila mocks her son-in-law. He made these holes for a reason, but he doesn't know how to use them. She calls him names. Jaime, you don't need to lean on there like a city worker. She even clubs him with lumber. You've been waiting on boards? If he doesn't behave, this will break over his head. I hit Jaime in the head. Hurry up. When Jaime's in handyman hell, Holy Sheila is in heaven. Today, Jaime is keeping to himself and successfully doing his work. For Sheila, that's just no fun. Everybody else else is have fun, and I can't have fun because he's too serious. Jaime is seriously sick of being laughed at. Why can't he have fun? Jaime has fun all the time. Good, we're done. Need another one here. <laughs> Why can't he? Be like the other people. Jaime never badmouths Sheila. If she makes a mistake, I don't boast about it. And I wish she did the same thing. If Sheila wants Jaime to be more like the other people, perhaps he'd say something like this. Sheila has a problem. She sure has a big mouth. Oh my gosh, she has to laugh at other people. Sheila, she comes across as knowing absolutely everything about everything and then doesn't have a clue. When our other candidates fight, I'm not sure how I do it. Well, make a decision. They always apologize. I want an apology. Sorry for yelling at you. And I'm sorry for calling you a biatch. Okay, I'm sorry. And you'll never? Do it again. Okay, can I have a kiss? Oh, fine. Thank you. Sheila never backs down from her rigid positions. You can't help somebody who doesn't want help. He wants you to turn screws for him. He wants you to do things for him, but you're denying... Turn screws for him? I don't think so. Ironically, Sheila thinks Jaime is the vindictive one. I don't want to see you like this. You think I do and I, I don't. Well, yeah, you do. No, I don't, Sheila. I don't know what else to say. Maybe now they'll finally kiss and make up. All I'm here for is to clean up after you. F*** off. Right. Um, <clears throat> well, um, uh, let's see here. Terry, Jeff... Jaime and Candace. But at least you won't be tempted to watch TV while sitting on the toilet. Like you? All managed to get their TVs hung. Although, every one of them is hanging limply. It doesn't, it tightens, but you can't, I can't tighten it no more. Really? Yeah. Ruth gets her mounting bracket on the wall, but she doesn't trust it enough to hold her TV. After the break, Tiling rips Terry and Angie apart. You better apologize. If you're not, you're going to go someplace. Don't call me an a-hole. Okay. Whoa! The nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman have spent a lot of time on their ladders doing the high work on their eco-sheds. That would hurt. Now it's time to shift gears and lay the cork floor that some people rushed into this morning. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. To lay a cork tile floor, cover the floor surface and the tiles with contact cement. Wait 30 minutes until the cement gets dry, then 
make cement on the tiles, contact cement on the floor. Press them in place with a rolling pin. Then dance a goofy jig. I go over to Terry's to see how the ones he laid this morning on wet cement are holding up. So the question is, are they stuck down or are they... They're been... stuck down good. That's not stuck down good at all. It is coming up on some corners there. The start. Hold the measuring tape over there. No, I'm not holding it. You can do it by yourself. If you're going to have an attitude today, you take a step out there until you think about what you did, because I'm not going to deal with an ass today. Don't you usually start toweling from the middle? In a large room, professionals would start in the center. But in a small room, you should start in the middle of the doorway. 111 inches. Exactly? Yes, exactly. So 111 divided by 2 is... Before rolling out the cement, Candace and Justin are marking the floor where they think every tile will be. This isn't something we recommended in class because it's a bad idea. So... What was the plan then? We're going in rows? I mean, do you know how many tiles you need? I'm gonna say 49. I think you need more than that. You gotta go 7 times 14. Terry usually makes mistakes and then just lives with them. The decision to tear up his mislaid floor doesn't come easily. Okay, let's do it. At five bucks a tile, Terry's laying waste to two hundred dollars worth of cork. If they were worth that much, I wouldn't have taken them. You wouldn't have taken them out. I'll roll the floor if you paint the back of the tiles. All right? All right. Are you sure it's all over, not just spots? Justin, that is immature. You're wrong. Terry doesn't want his wife to help. Are you done being an a-hole now? I'm not being an a-hole. Yes, you are. Okay, see you later. You better apologize. If you're not, you're going to go someplace. Don't call me an a-hole. You have no reason to call me a name. You can go and have a cigarette, go have a coffee, whatever. I'm not arguing. Holy frick. Terry just ripped up 40 tiles because when he laid them this morning, he incorrectly put them down on wet cement. Adhesive must be dry before assembly. 20 minutes ago, I explained how to use contact cement. You do not put it on and then stick a tile down immediately. You don't use it when it's wet. Somehow, the information isn't getting through to Terry. Once again, he's tiling on wet cement. This is such a pain in the ass, I'll tell you that. No. Pain is watching Terry cut his tiles to fit after they've been cemented down. It's not clear yet. They're supposed to be clear. They have to turn clear. Another 20 minutes. Candace's best laid floor plan isn't working out. That's not exactly tight, hey? We're not really following our line. You can see we're way off our line. And you can see Justin thinks his wife's new floor is a cutting board. Well, there's glue all over this. You have a wet rag, what do you do with it? I don't. None of this crap is straight. And if you had any comments to make about my work, you should have made it before I did it. Uh, their work area is a disaster as usual. Um, she's going to have contact all over herself. Tiling in rows gets a little boring. So, Jeff tiles in Tetris shapes. One of the benefits of having a smaller shed. He really didn't get it as far as layout. The only people doing this job right are Jaime and Sheila. Since their blowout this morning, Jaime hasn't made a single mistake. And Sheila hasn't had a single laugh. Even if you're back to back and butt to butt, it's nice to see you working together. It's much like at home, just quiet, no fun in it. Maybe having fun is the problem. There goes the final tile. Is that in? Are we in? Are we in? Good enough. This miserable experience has produced perfect results. If she has something to say, then give the input in a way that, that it can be usable. Jeff has tiled himself a little island. This upsets you? Yes. It's not lined up as perfect as I would like it. When Jeff finishes, he senses a failure underfoot. I'll give myself a six on this. Holy smokes, look at your floor. What's the matter with it? Nothing. That's what I'm holy smoking about. What got into you? Motivation. I didn't want to be the laughing stock. It turned out to be good. It does look good. But because he used wet cement in the doorway, it won't stand the test of time. It's just under eight. 
Just under eight. That's what it was. Doesn't sound like a very accurate measurement. Well, we'll see. We won't force it. I'm not forcing it. Ruth's floor is a few corks short of a case. After the break, Candace punches in a shift doing trim work. Put a different one in in a different spot. Yeah, I might know the spots. Here at our rehabilitation center in Toronto, oh, you son of a Canada's worst handymen have shown us they're a little rough around the edges. To cover their flaws, their next challenge is to put trim and molding around windows, doors, and edges. Now they explain to you how they wanted to do the windows. Yep. Good. To finish the windows, get a three-quarter inch thick standard pine board. It will fit perfectly in this slot. Cut the pine so it sits flush with the wall, then nail up the molding, being sure to have the wide side out. You know the wood that perfectly fits in that thing on there? We, we gotta fill that up and then put it over it. I don't know what you mean. It would be good if we had a miter saw. Everyone has access to a professional woodcutter. Bing, 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 go, bingo, bingo. But he isn't being used. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, take that piece of wood out and I'll explain something. Jump this. Ruth, Ruth. Most miter boxes come with this offset edge and they have anchor holes for screws. See that? Yeah, screw it in. Why not? Having a stable miter box should mean an end to Ruth's bad angle cuts. Does it go like that? Or does it go the other way? Well, that can't go that way, can it? In Candace's shed, Justin is taking over every aspect of this job. There. It's in. It's in. 34 and a half. 34 and a half. 34 and a half. Okay. Don't question me. Justin does the entire job, except for one piece of molding. Look at Justin, can you see, look at this for a sec? Put a different one in in a different spot. Yeah, I might know the spots. To create a stable surface for the trim, use only one full-length piece of pine per side. This seamless assembly also gives you a much cleaner look. You see this forever. Right. Forever you're going to see that. I'll fix the door. No, it's off on that one corner, and I don't know why. Door trim should fit snugly together. Terry's doesn't reach. you got to learn how to do it right instead of the stupid way. Terry salvages the piece for his window, but... No, the other way. I cut it the wrong way. Who cares? Put I care, hon, because you know what? Why do you think I'm here? This is why I'm here. Ruth's trim is mismatched, but Ruth is here because her handiwork is destructive. <gasps> Jeez, I've cracked the wood. So that piece is dead, is it? Ruth is dead tired. So you're still working, right? Me, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, good. That's working. That's working. I'm thinking. Ruth is thinking about quitting her trim work and trying one more time to put her window in. Let's take the last bit of life I have left in me and put the window in. I know what I'm doing, though. You're telling me to do it, and I know I've got to go and do it. Oh, God. What this window needs is Fred. Everything level? Get the screws! What Fred starts, Ruth finishes. <laughs> is that window in? It's got no trim. <laughs> but Ruth's window is finally in. They got my window in finally, and it was perfect. That was a thrill. The eco sheds being built by Canada's worst handymen are being donated to Habitat for Humanity Canada. So, to make sure we deliver high quality products, today's team challenge is to finish as many undone jobs as possible. <laughs> Terry was named the most improved last episode. That means today, he's the foreman. You're not going to lift a finger in terms of hammer swinging, but you're going to tell everybody what needs to be done. Right. Hung and groove ceiling, this tile work, door jam. Finish the roof while it be connected. Electrical panel. panel has to go up. Uh, sanding, painting, fix the tiles. In total, Terry identifies 46 jobs that need to be finished. <laughs> I'm the foreman. You look comfortable. <laughs> Just need a cup of... 
coffee <laughs> and the smoke. Okay, this is what's gonna happen. We're not gonna do shit. Jeff's shed at all or Candace's shed. We're gonna go to my shed and... And already his team has lost its will to work. Okay, let's go. And I don't you want no grief from anybody. SOP. Come on, let's get to work. No grief. Oh, come on. Finish the roof. Got to finish that light right there. Window, the border on the bottom has to be fixed. The composter has to be finished. This toilet has to be connected. This wall has to be complete. Finish, paint and sand. Here's your list. There's disrespect. Don't lose it because you're not getting another one. And then there's Sheila. I gave them orders, they weren't listening, especially Sheila. Don't give me no grief. You listen to the foreman. Do the job, get it done. Terry is graciously allowing Jaime to work on his own shed. I want your, uh, your panel box on. And he's dispatched Fred to Ruth's fiasco. Vapor barrier has to be complete. Yep. Um, the ceiling has to be complete. The light fixtures, the urinal. They don't have a urinal. They don't have a urinal? Uh, ladies don't like using urinals, Terry. That's not all they don't like. Are you smoking? Yep. Get, get out, out of this shed right now. Smoking. No get smokers out. in here. No Go. smokers in this shed. Ow, 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 ow. ow, ow, ow. Oh, he's walking around looking like a fawn with a cigarette in his mouth. Do, 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 do. You know, this isn't even fair. We should have done everybody's shed but yours. you got a meeting to go to somewhere, don't you? You're like all the rest of the foreman. You tend to say one thing and mean the other. Terry's um, showed us that he, he lacked a bit of uh, experience in organization. Terry was hopeless as a foreman. How's it going? Good, good, good. They're hating me, though. Go over here. This crew, my God. Every time I go over there, they complain, they complain, they complain. Or I'll put it on your face. In a twisted effort to get less complaints, Terry disrupts the people doing the most work. Justin, can you come over to uh, Bruce Shed? Angie, can you go help Jaime? You gotta go help him. Oh, I'm here. I don't want to go there. Get over there. Why? Seems a little disorganized. They uh, ripped up the list. Terry! What are you guys doing? We were doing all right until we got interrupted by some guys asking us how we were doing. Oh, that's not nice at all. There's a malfunction in the organization. <laughs> I was about five minutes from finishing Jaime's shed, and then he pulled me over here, and then he started changing people who was cutting stuff. So now it's just a big show. In Terry's own shed, the workers show less respect. The guy that owns his shed, you know? I don't know. Is he an idiot? Yeah. I... Sheila. Yeah. I don't want you doing that no more. I know, I'm just... Sheila, no! If you don't get out of here, you're gonna get this Brad, in your face! Try as he might, Terry doesn't inspire. Well, you guys are doing an awesome job. Very wonderful. Uh-huh. Yeah, Ruth, can you, uh... I'm in the middle of something. I know, but I know, but... Are you helping us? I got kicked out of my own shit. <laughs> Foreman! Yes, sir. I need something to do. You need something to do? This is full-on chaos. Candace? What? Stop. Come here. Come here. Yeah, but then I'm building the frame. You can't build a frame. You got to go over here and help Justin. Where is he? He's coming. Okay. Controlling nine people for 90 minutes, Harry only manages to complete seven of his 46 jobs. After the break, we'll name the worst for this episode. <laughs> what started off as a jovial bit of fun hey. has turned serious. If I am Canada's worst handyman, I'm going to go home and cry. In just two more episodes, we'll be naming Canada's worst handyman. To decide who is the worst for this episode, the experts join me in Jaime's shed, where our tour of mishaps begins with window trim. These joints here have big gaps in them. It doesn't fit properly. But the biggest thing, casing's on backwards. No, the biggest thing is Jaime's relationship with Sheila. Stop doing it! Put down six tiles, then I ripped them up, and then um, it just went, it went kibosh from there. Because all they do is fight and bicker. They had a big blowout. And then when they had to come back, the next challenge was this floor. Oh, they worked together well, and they did a great job. As foreman, Terry had six people working in his shed today, and still... This trim around this window, it's not complete. The miters are bad. The nails are not set. Molding's not finished. How much is this tile worth? 
$5 per square foot. That says it all right there. In the shed owned by Ruth, the window is finally in her extra large frame. Foam isn't intended to fill that much of a gap, and so you still get air coming through. The TV's not up. She struggled with trying to put that mount on. And the door on the battery box isn't shutting. Hinge bound, we call it. It won't close. In Jeff's shed, it's a similar story. So here we got hinge bound hinges again. And gaps in Jeff's tiles. This is a floor. It's going to fill up with dirt, and eventually that'll start peeling away. In the shed owned by Candace, the biggest problem is the power struggle she's having with her husband. She grapes at him if he helps, and she grapes at him if he doesn't help. That stress deeply wounded Candace's tiling job. Huge gapes when they laid this floor, and they lost accuracy as they moved along. They were out by half an inch. And let's not forget this joint effort. Holy cow. And it's on backwards. This episode seems to have been dominated by the nominators. So, for the most improved handyman, Jill is suggesting Jaime and his mother-in-law. Based on that blowout and the end result, their floor is the best, and they seem to maybe resolve some stuff. Most improved for this episode, Jeff. Jeff has come along pretty good, but he's not doing the actual work. Perhaps the worst handyman this episode is the person who's allowing their nominator to get in the way. Ruth and Michelle just seem to be doing more bickering than working. Candace is letting Justin take over. Ultimately, there's got to be one boss. And Terry's wife, Angie, isn't really helping. And she went ahead and screwed up that floor a lot of ways. He didn't take control whatsoever. You know what you're going to see for the worst? Justice. Worst handyman for episode six, I think it's going to be me again. Very well possibly could be me. Least improved this week is probably me. So, I don't know what it is. I just can't measure. Before I name the worst, Terry has to give back the foreman's tool belt. I don't care. We are recognizing that these sheds are being done by two people at a time. So... The most improved for this episode is the person who really came together with their nominator to get through a difficult task. They actually managed to cement their relationship. Jaime, I'm talking about you and your mother-in-law, Sheila. So you are the most improved for putting your floor down absolutely perfectly. And the next group challenge, you will be co-foreman. Now it's time to name the worst for this episode. And the worst is the person who's, well, not building their shed so much as relying on their nominator to build their shed for them. Justin, Candace, this is what we call justice. Oh! <laughs> That's eerie. It's time to hang your head in shame. Candace and Justin were named the worst this episode because of their constant struggle for control. Everyone, you know, thinks he's so handy and whatnot, and so he thinks he's invincible out there. I don't and think every... I'm invincible. I don't know. Justin, like, I'm talking. 34 and a half. Okay. Don't question me. Stop it. It's mine. Justin, stop Hold doing on. my work. There. It's time for Candace's private lesson. Sometimes it is crucial that you, Candace, do a job all by I yourself. I try, but he just butts right in there. Some jobs just aren't meant for two people. <laughs> I learned the lesson a while ago. <laughs> he needs a lesson. As painful as it may be, Justin promises to be more hands off. Let her do stuff on her own. Yes. Even if it's Even wrong. Even if it's wrong. Even if it's Even wrong. Even if it's wrong. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Handyman. You would love it. I hate it. The eco sheds get roofed. I can't reach. I want to know how we're going to fix it. Then shingles. Don't go crooked. All in one day. This is so hard to do. Just one roof at a time here. To pull it off. Good job, Michelle. Good work. Jaime and Sheila need to be inspirational leaders. You don't have to do anything. I'm the farmer. Get the hell off of your seat.
better clean this up.